own who you are. You're the creator. You're the master of your life. Whatever you desire to change, what is first necessary? That you give permission for it to change. How many of you are waiting for the angels to come by and say, you can change tomorrow? Or how many of you are waiting for an angel to come by and say, tomorrow you get money? Or how many of you are asking God to do it for you? Why not speak to this God? <laughs> I mean, it is this simple. From the Lord God of my being. From the Lord God of my being. I give myself permission. I give myself permission. That everything I do. That everything I do. Brings me joy. Brings me joy. Prosperity. Prosperity. And abundance. And abundance. I'm worth it. I'm worth it. So be it. So be it. Free, kid. <laughs> and it's that simple. Now she's changed the laws, all of the old laws that said she shouldn't have this or she shouldn't have that. And nobody else could do it for her. Jesus standing here couldn't change her laws. I can't change her laws. It's up to her to change them. I can just offer her the options. That's why she's here. To learn how to become master of her life. My purpose in life and my reason for being on planet Earth is to graduate this time to take my body with me, to remember who I am, and to share that information with others so they remember who they are, that the flow that is us, that is part of the Creator within each one of us, becomes part of our life out here. Fourth density is already on this plane, so we're able to slide into that next density. And this is why we're here, is to remind people this is what it's all about. This is who they are. They are part of the Creator. My philosophy has, is not a philosophy. It has become a way of life. I wanted something that could become a way of life, that meant something to me, that gave me something to share with others that was real and that worked every time that it was used and not something that maybe sometimes or wouldn't work. How can we share with you who you really are? Why are you on planet Earth? 30 years I've been doing this type of work, you know, working with people in the healing field, sharing with them what was going on in the bodies. It was never intended for our bodies to be sick anyway. The only thing that ever causes illness is not listening to the God within. And it's only a catalyst created by us to get our attention. I remember driving on my motor scooter in a wild, wild thunderstorm. And there were two claps of lightning that sounded real close and it was just like the veils had been parted and I could see and I could see things far beyond what other people could see after I found out they didn't understand this. And ever since that time, uh, it has been a time for me to say, this is how I see it. My point of perception is different than yours. Could I share a different point of perception? If I can, then you have an opportunity to change your point of perception. As Carlos Castaneda said, if he could change people's point of perception, then the whole world changed for them. If we could arrive at a place where we looked at life as everyone out there is a God, all on the same adventure, and the adventure is remembering who you are and learning about feelings and emotions. As I understand this, each one of us are a part of the Creator. We're all volunteers to come to planet Earth. Nobody grabbed us by the scruff of the neck and the seat of the pants and threw us down here. We came because we are all volunteers. We wanted to know about feelings and emotions. We were God already before we ever came here. That soul, that spirit inside was part of the Creator. And when that was there, our whole thing is to do what? Remember who we are. As we start to remember our point of perception changes, the way we look at life changes. There is only one Creator, and once you accept you're a part of God, that you are that part, so is everybody else. No one is better than anybody else or less than. It's the same adventure, and the adventure is to find out who we are. Why are we here? We're here to love ourselves, to find out what love feels like. Our desire is to return to back with the Creator. To do that, we have to vibrate at the same rate of speed the Creator vibrates at, and that's pure love. And we don't know what love feels like. That's the only reason this God needed a body. 
It is now time for Fourth Density came in on planet Earth during the last harmonic convergence, about 30 days before. At that particular time, with Fourth Density coming in here, Fourth Density we mean a faster vibration. First Density, as we would look at it, would be plants, uh, would be rocks and minerals. All they have is body. The second density is body and spirit, which is plants and animals. Third density would be plants and animals. And our third density awareness is us as people, because we get to add spirit and mind to it. Fourth density is when our angelic beings come in and walk with us. That's the faster vibration. And that is what is already here. And as we become aware of that, Jesus came to teach us to love ourselves because love is the only key that in increases and makes the body vibrate faster. And as we get into that, then we start moving into the next density. Being truly spiritual becomes a way of life. There is no fear involved in it. You understand your oneness with the Creator and the oneness with all there is. And then there is no separation. Most of your religions try to speak as if they have the only key that if you don't do this you can't make it and if you don't do that you can't make it and they want to tell you in fear that uh, this planet if you don't make this graduation there isn't going to be another one that's not so the creator created all of us and never created anything to destroy itself and from that standpoint there are other graduations and if people don't make this one grand there will be others my wife and I and my son and my daughter went into Mexico and lived with the Indians. We understood there wasn't doctors down there and somehow they were all living and doing wonderful. And we wanted to know what was behind it. So I went down there by myself and I gave everything I had away stateside. My cars, my furniture, my clothes, everything. I said, I'm going into Mexico and I'm going to find out if this works. And I went on a grand adventure and discovered that there are people who remember who they are and they ha live it. They are called campesinos, the mountain people in Mexico. And because of their understanding, they tele telepathy was a natural thing. They could check a grocery list from town to the ranch just as easy as you and I do uh, by phone. And then they could, uh, on our travels across Mexico by horseback, there was always somebody to meet us. They had no phones, they had no way of communication, but they knew we were coming, and they had already decided where we were going to stay. And it was just a grand adventure of learning how to live in oneness with all things. Because they remembered that there was no difference. They remained sovereign. They understood that all were part of the Creator, and the only way they could become enslaved is by giving their power away. Most of the desire of society has been to control people. Our understanding of this is that there are two paths of service to the Creator. One is a path of service of control, of having power over people, of dominating and telling people what to do. And that is a path of duality, or as I understand it, the path of Lucifer. And that path is a path also of serving the Creator. The Creator only gave us one law, and that was total free will choice. And the other path is the service of love, love to yourself and love to others, which was the teachings as we understand them. From that path, you have the option of being of service to ourselves and to humanity, to Earth, and the other path is trying to control things. And as I understand it right now, these are the two paths, neither being right or wrong or good or bad, this was Lucifer's trip in the Garden of Eden. And Lou came in and said, the tree of knowledge was the difference between right and wrong. Well, that was duality. Because once you understood duality, then you were no longer a part of the Creator. The Creator was outside of you. And if the Creator was outside of you, then you weren't a part of it. And that's all we had to buy, was that the Creator was not in here anymore, just out there. And when we did that, we gave our freedom up. We were divided. We could be conquered. And you are giving your power away to either a belief system or to someone else who is not, uh, who is wanting to control you. The God within, within you doesn't want this to happen. 
and so it starts trying to do things and it just gives you a little bit of this and then it really digs and then it's got a two before and then you wind up in the hospital when you have to listen to the God within. And it's all a series of how hard does this God have to react to get your attention. And once you understand how it works, then you can change it by calling forth a change in your body. There are no impossibilities. One grand teacher used to tell us if we could use 10% more of our awareness up here and we lost an arm, we could grow it again. Whatever laws I have owned that are causing this judgment or this illness in my life, I release. And if it doesn't work right away, then you say, from the Lord God of my being, any laws I have owned since the beginning of time, because now I'm going back and I'm, I'm encompassing my RNA DNA factor. And I say, anything that I have owned since the beginning of time that is causing this, I release. Because now it's our time to clean house. Now it's our time to straighten out and get rid of all this other stuff, okay? We're weeding our garden, so to speak. It has nothing to do with the intellect. In fact, this is probably uh, Lucifer's greatest uh, uh, tool that it works with down here. This was never intended when we designed our bodies to let this be master. Master was the God within our feelings and emotions. But we down here have been taught to give our power to this. And we wouldn't give our power to our liver or to our kidneys or to our bladder. And yet we are willing to give it to this. And this doesn't even go with spirit when it leaves. And this was never intended to be our boss down here. We gave it energy in the first place to become what? What did we give it power to do? To be our policeman and to tell us of other people's laws and then to enforce ours. Not the creator's laws, ours and other people's laws. But this was never intended to be boss. And with people, if they will understand that they can take the power away from this and return it back to the God within by getting into their feelings and emotions, then they can change and heal their bodies. Once you understand the causation factor, what was it that the God inside was trying to tell you? And the moment you have that, there is no need for the catalyst anymore. I work with people in showing them how to get back in touch with their angels, how to work with the angelic community so that even as Jesus said, it was not he that did the healings, but the Father within him, or that spirit or that flow of energy. And this is how the angels work, is they're the ones that bring in the flow, and they're part of the energy and the flow that works and I teach people how to get back in touch with the angels and to remake their commitments with them to be their hands and their eyes and their ears and their mouth on this plane. Well, I've lived here many many times. <laughs> in fact to me I understand that fear in the second chakra area or the second energy area is that part of us that was left and brought forward by the God within. Since we have been here many, many times on this planet, we've done a lot of things that this God doesn't want us to repeat and had no other way of teaching us or telling us about these things we've already done. So it created fear and put fear here. Fear is our reminder that we have already done this before. It didn't bring us joy and we don't have to repeat it. In fact, it is our teacher. And if we give ourselves permission to be afraid and declare that it is our teacher, the moment we get it, we understand what it means. God does not have karma, and each one of us are gods. And one of the most important things for us to understand is that if you believe in that, then you will create those experiences for yourself. To get off that wheel, to get off of the karmic debt path is to simply honor this is God, simply here to learn to love itself. In loving itself, it can share love with others. Therefore, there is no karma. So that person says, hey, wait, this doesn't bring me joy. I've done this before, and I have enough fear of this, so now I decide to change it. And it speaks to itself from the Lord God of my being. I release whatever laws I've owned that are creating this. And it's done. In most cases, the, the, the God with them, once you've understood what's been going on, uh, we have people that we work with who uh, are facing surgery in the breast area. They, once they understand what the whole thing is about, they make a simple statement, they're gone. I mean, they're gone within moments. 
Um, if a person is, has one leg shorter than the other one, we share with them that they are simply what causes it. They make a statement, I've seen the legs grow that quick while they're, you know, right after they say it. It is a way that works, and it works instantaneously. I mean, this is this simple. Most of us have forgotten how easy it is to be master of your life and your body. It was never intended when we designed these bodies that they be ill. Illness is caused from not listening to her. And all she had to know was what was this, what was causing it? What was the causation factors? Yay. <laughs> Remember, we were gods before we came here. Our desire to come here was what? Our desire was to experience feelings and emotions. That's the only reason we needed a body. You know, this wasn't one of those things that we just had to take on. We, without a body, you can't experience feelings and emotions. So you came down here, each of us did, and we said, oh, I will create this body. And in fact, you designed your own body. Literally, you rented your mother's body out while you created yours. And in the process, it, this is your design, your creation. This is your practice at how it's done, how it works. Because one of these days you're going to be having your own world and you're going to create your own people. And this is just an experience time for that. I mean, here you have to take full, full ownership. That's what being God means. It means I am. So if I am and I have created it, then it, this is mine. I've done it. And I look at this. This is my creation and I did it. And it's either all right or I'm at war with it. And I find a lot of people who are experiencing health problems are at war with their creations. And the moment they understand they created it, they designed it, then they have a chance to relook at what was the purpose. Why did you create this this way? And we work with that, and after a while they understand what happened. Their whole point of perception changes, and then the healing takes place. In other words, there is only one law, and that is the law of total free will choice. And we're only here for the adventure. Not right or wrong or good or bad or positive or negative. All of those things are part of Lucifer's training. And that is a separation. Because when you remember that this is God and you are part of God, then your point of perception changes to why you're here. As long as you believe in right and wrong and good and bad and positive and negative, you have already accepted duality. I don't care what label you put on it. That's all Lucifer came to teach was separation, was duality, nothing else. Lucifer never intended to do and didn't have to do anything, except even in the Garden of Eden, Lucifer put forth the concept that there was right and wrong. And the moment that we bought, there was more in there than Adam and Eve at the time. Uh, we were walking and talking with that understanding. Um, when we accepted the fact that there was right and wrong, then we separated ourselves, not the Creator. The Creator never turned His face from us or we wouldn't be here. But the, we said, oh, then God's only out there and not in here. Because if I'm bad, then God doesn't want anything to do with me. That's called judgment. Lucifer has the other path, and the other path is that path of power, of control, of force, of being in charge of, uh, wanting to dominate others. And the path of love is that path of free will, of sovereignty, of oneness with the Creator. And both of them are viable, and at some point, those on the path of the other path of being in charge of people will finally arrive that there is only oneness in all things anyway. When they do that, then they they blend right back into the path. What did Jesus tell everybody when he did a healing? Your sins are forgiven you. Because he knew if you thought you had sinned, what would happen? You would bring the illness back. You have not sinned. You have not goofed. He knew that if that was what they were going against, then that was up to them, and they, they were the ones who could change it. So we love ourselves. We're moving into this next density when we quit picking on us when we quit judging our, ourselves, when we quit judging the Creator, because every time you judge you, you're judging the Creator. And if you can't love you, you can't love the Creator. And this is, you know, people say, why should I love me? I said, what could you give to others if you don't love you? It starts here. 
And they said, well, that's being selfish. I said, no, that was a law somebody said that wanted to control you. And so this is what we share with people. Anything that's going on in your body is simply going on because you're not listening to this God. Probably a third of the work I do is releasing entities because they are there. There is an in-between world of gods who didn't want to leave this plane. And as soon as they lose a body, they hang around in another form till they can find somebody that they can uh, blend with. And then there becomes the battle for dominance in the person. I desire to be free. Creator, source of all things, we come before you again to honor and fulfill the only law that you ever gave us, and that was total free will choice. And from this commandments, we call forth help. We call forth the Archangel Michael to stand at her head. We call forth the Archangel Raphael to stand at her feet. And as they spread their golden wings across her body, we ask that they escort these entities from this plane, that they be returned to theirs. From the source of all things, to the Lord God of your being, in peace and in love. Anything that has been placed in your physical body, with or without your permission, that is interfering with your free will choice, is hereby commanded in your name, the name of light and love, the name of the Creator, that you be freed and that your physical body be returned to you only. Almost 95% of all the people going through drug problems, going through alcohol problems, abuse problems, are all having an entity. They picked up an outside entity. And Jesus knew this at the time. He was casting out these. He understood this is how it worked. When Jesus came on this plane, he came to teach fourth density awareness, love. He, all of his healings that he did were all in that understanding and that awareness. And what we do when we do schools and when we do classes, it's teach people how to get into that fourth density awareness so that they air all the things that we do are natural. They're supposed to be. They're not big deals. <laughs> they're understood. The more you love you, your body vibrations are starting to change, and what happens? You are starting to blend into that next density, right? And you'll just ease right on into it like it's the most natural thing in the world. But what is prayer? Prayer is talking to the Creator. Which Creator? Out there only? How about this one? And once you understand that each one of us is God and that anything going on there in their life, they created, they designed, then you honor that. Hey, that's yours, keep it, unless you want to change it. My first question to people when they come in to lay on the table is what would you like to change most in your life? And I've had people say, well, will you change it? And I said, ah, then I'm taking power over you and you've been doing this all your life. What do you want to change? You have to give the power back to the individual. That person has to accept they are a sovereign God not accepted, just willing to venture into that awareness. Because the moment that God inside hears it, they got it, boy, and they're not going to let them forget it. They have their attention, and they will do whatever is necessary to keep it. And remember, healing can work by whatever is necessary for the person. It is my keys that I need to work with. If I'm working with people who are coming from a very Christian standpoint, I speak Christian because it is their terms. It's not me. I'm not going to judge them. They're in that belief system because it brings them joy right now. If not, they will look for it later. How can I help is how, what is your keys, not mine. Uh, I do exorcisms for Jewish people, for all belief systems, and it never has to be involved in my one belief system. It can be done in many ways. The mannerisms can be changed. The wording can be changed. But it all says the same thing. The most important thing is not to have any conclusions when you begin to work. Because the angel's way of looking at a body is totally different than ours. They are looking at it from a standpoint of, did you get the, has the God inside got your attention yet? And then if the God inside has your attention, are you willing to make the change? And if you're willing to make the change, then boom, 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 it's done. And, but they have to hear that person speak. So many times people have said, I thought it, I thought it. And I said, that won't work. What have you ever created through willpower? Nothing. It doesn't work that way. 
You are total charge of your body, and what you want to do with your body is your business. We are, I heard a real good way of placing it the other day, we are gods who are co-creators and can change anything we eat into what is necessary. And the moment you understand that, then if you want to believe in something, go for it. But there isn't anything more powerful than God. I mean, people, I, I usually carry a sugar packet in my pocket. And I said, is this more powerful than God? And they say, no. I said, then what makes you think that this is going to hurt God? If you have a belief system that says it will, then it will. And it's that simple. That's what being God means. Once we understand we have our own laws and you are in charge of those laws. I have, I'm a midwife and I've delivered a lot of kids and I have never found instructions written on any kid yet. I mean, we all have free will choice. <laughs> Do it our way. Vegetarianism came from Tibet. It's where it originally came from because there was an inner opening to the inner world, which is that part of us that the, the third wave people live in. They are the fairies and the groans and, and the earth spirits. And their vibration is a little different than ours. They do not eat meat. For the Tibetans who were the guard and gatekeepers to the entries into the second, into that inner world, their most, their grandest desire was to be invited to live down there. And so they had to change their body so that they didn't need meat. But they couldn't tell people that that is why they were doing it. So they put it out here as a way of life. As I understand it, life is life, and the Creator is the Creator. There is no difference between green blood and red blood. A plant faints when you take it. Life is life. If we honor what we're eating and bless it, then we are honoring it, and in the creation we're honoring it. Does God have to do penance? Really, God isn't here to do penance. If it brings you joy and that's what turns you on and that helps keep you in tune with you, go for it. There isn't a right or a wrong or a good or a bad. How does God create? How did God create the heavens and the earth? In the beginning was the Word. We have to learn that the Word is our creator. When we give it the feelings and our desire is so much that we are willing to say from the Lord God of my being, I call forth and then it, we, whatever it is we want, it happens. Because we're putting the energy, the desire behind it and it works, it has to work.